Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Hobbymate Meteor 5-inch racing quadcopter. This quadcopter is available in a few versions. You can get it as a kit version, which is actually the version that I've got and I just finished assembling it. In addition, you can also get it as a plug and play version, which comes assembled and doesn't come with a receiver. And you can also get it as a buy and fly version, which comes with either a First Sky XM Plus or an First Sky RXSR receiver, depending on your choice. In addition, you can choose between two KV options. You can get the 2750 KV version, which is the one I've got, which can handle 4 and 5S LiPo batteries. And you can get an 1800 KV version, which can handle 5 and 6S LiPo batteries. The Meteor is very similar to the Hobbymate Comet, which I've recently built and reviewed. Except the frame and the motors, these quadcopters are using the same components. And the frames are also very similar as well. You can see that the bottom part looks almost identical. Both quadcopters are using replaceable arms with a thickness of 5mm and the frames are stretched X-frame with a wheelbase of 220mm. The motors are also very similar but not identical. The Comet is using the RC in power 2305, 2500 kV or 1800 kV motors and the Meteor is using the RC in power 2306, either 2750 or 1800 kV motors. Inside the kit we can find the Airbot Omnibus F4V6 flight controller. The Airbot Typhoon 32, 35A, BLL32 4-in-1 ESC. The Panda RC Hobbymate branded VT5804 48 channels VTX. It has selectable output range of 25, 100, 200, 400 and 600 millivolts, and it supports smart audio. Next we can find 4 Hobbymate branded RC in power 2306, 2750 kV motors. If you chose of course the 2750 version. As I mentioned before, they are also available in an 1800 kV option. Along with the motors, we can find bags with screws, the harness that connects the flight controller with the 4-in-1 ESC, a Foxeer Lollipop V2 RCP antenna with an SMA antenna connector, an MCX to female SMA antenna connector, a bag with M3 spacers and screws, and also some rubber washers to soft mount the flight controller, 14 AWG battery leads with a high quality XT60 connector. The bag with all the parts for the metal frame. A Hobbymate branded battery velcro strap. A pretty thick anti-skid battery sticker. And finally the Foxeer Aero Macro Pro FEV camera. The next thing I'm going to do is to assemble all the parts together. Then I'm going to go over beta flight configuration and head outdoors and test the Meteor out. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and I will see you in the end of it in order to give you my conclusion.
So overall, I can tell you that Hobbycool did a pretty good job with the Comet and have done even a better one with the Meteor. This is a well-designed and powerful quadcopter. The 2306 RC in power motors will give you plenty of punch and they perform great both on 4 and 5S LiPo batteries. In terms of flight time, you can expect about 4 minutes using a 1500 mAh 4S LiPo battery. But of course, it depends how you fly a quadcopter. If you're not going to push the throttle, you can get even 5 minutes. One of the things I like about this frame in comparing to the Comet frame is that they give you the option to mount the antenna on the back, which is in my opinion better than mounting it on the top because it's going to make it more durable. In addition, the Meteor is using high quality components and for the price of $200 for the kit version, I think that it provides you with an excellent value for money. And if you're going to purchase the parts separately, it's going to cost you much more. Now, by the way, when I built this quadcopter, I made a small mistake. And instead of putting the battery leads on the back, I put it on the side like that. And the main issue is that if you're going to need to replace a motor, you're going to have a hard time to access the motor pads. So the better stick from the side. And then if you need to replace a motor, it's going to be much easier. I'm going to include in the description box down below the dump settings for this quadcopter. So if you want to upgrade to Betaflight 3.5.3, you can use it because some settings need to be applied to the flight controller. I also used the PID settings for the assembled version from Hobbycool and I think that it works pretty well. So if you're going to build your own quadcopter, I recommend using it. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the Hobbycool Meteor, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.